Let's take a look at every winner of the War Jackie Award, i.e. the best young player of the year for Newcastle United. I bet most of them turned out just terrible. 1998, Aaron Hughes. Aaron Hughes was no world beater, but still, he was a player that Newcastle United should probably have held on to. Having come through at St James's Park as a youth, he made nearly 300 appearances for the Magpies, but effectively sent his tomb career up in flames when he fluffed the decisive penalty against Partizan Belgrade, meaning that Newcastle wouldn't be playing Champions League football that season. So the club spat him out to Aston Villa in May 2005 for 1 million quid, before chucking 8 times that on a man who clearly didn't know his left foot from his right. At the age of 38, the 112 capped international is still going for hearts up in Scotland. 1999, Michael Chopra. Michael Chopra had a weird career. The Geordie boy only ever scored one goal for the club, 15 seconds after coming onto the pitch at the Stadium of Light. Judging by the expression on his face, it looked as if he'd just discovered his first direction. If you told him that within a year he'd be signing for the enemy, he'd have probably broke into a fit of tears and would have been disowned by his family. But no, Chopper did end up at Sutherland, pretty much just to pay off the gambling debts, scored a few goals, but clearly shat his pants in the North East Derby, before scuffling back to South Wales with Cardiff in 2009, before spending the next few years bouncing from club to club, embroiled in financial troubles, and getting dumped by his wife on Facebook. What are they, 14? Anyway, the man hated on Sunland and laughed at it Newcastle has been without a club for two years after leaving Kerala Blasters out in India. 2000, Gary Caldwell. Brother of Stephen, big things were expected of the Caldwell brothers at Newcastle. Nothing really happened. Gary got turfed out to Hibernian in 2004, got the big move to Celtic in 2006 where he won a couple of league titles before returning to England via Wigan Athletic in 2010 where he somehow won an FA Cup. Don't ask me how. The Man City lads were probably out in the last before the game by the looks of it. He's since gone into management with Wigan, Chesterfield and most recently Partick Thistle. 2001, Shola Miobi. To be honest, Shola Miobi is probably going to be one of the best players in this list. Despite having the touch of a Catholic priest, Amiobi was a great player but I'll have to liken his time cycle career to a plague of cockroaches. The man went through about six or seven different managers and still nobody was able to get rid of him. It was like trying to get rid of a stage five clinger or a case of genital herpes. The man was not budging. He lasted nearly 20 years at the club and he only hit double digits in a season once and even that was in the championship. To be fair, Amiobi may have been bang average but hey, he scored at the new camp and caused many a Sunderland fan to cry into their sugar puffs so he's been a success. At the age of 37, he's currently unemployed having been let go by Notts County who seem to have got tired of wearing Newcastle's clothes from seven years ago. 2002, Stephen Taylor. What was Stephen Taylor's legacy at Newcastle be? Well, probably pretending to have been shot by a Russian sniper in the middle of a game and then getting his jaw busted by Andy Carroll in a training session. Other than that, he didn't really do much. I mean, there was a time maybe 10 years ago when he was actually getting linked to Everton and an England call-up. But the man was made of glass and was lucky to have made it on the pitch 268 times. By the time he finished up in 2016, he was like a horse begging to be brought out back and shot in the head. In a way, he sort of was. I mean, he's been forced to play with a bunch of Aussie nobodies at Wellington Phoenix somewhere near the outback. 2003, Peter Ramage. Just terrible. Just god awful. Peter Ramage, I'm sorry, what youth coach thought this fella was good enough for the first team? Paul Dummett picked up his fair share of stick when he first got the promotion. The fans were probably ready to chuck this fella off the goddamn time bridge. He made his debut against Olympiacos in March 2005, and then his league debut a month later at Old Trafford. But by god, he was bad and was eventually spat out to QPR. His CV reads like a who's who of human ineptitude, but he's currently the assistant coach of Phoenix Rising. Which means that Didier Drogba is bringing the curtain down in his career, taking orders from Peter Ramage. What the hell? 2004, Martin Britton. Most of you won't have a clue who Martin Britton is, but he's a staple of Northeast non-league. He made his debut under Sir Bobby Robson, replacing Michael Bridges in a 3-1 UEFA Cup win over Valerenga in March 2004, and made just one league appearance at 1-0 defeat at Man City back when they were terrible. He was a winger, not a very good one. By 2009 he was at Gateshead before ending up at Blyde Spartans, Bedlington Terriers and since 2013 has been making ends meet at Ashington at AFC. A strong contender for worst player in the list I'd say. 2005, Paul Huntington. Paul Huntington isn't the worst player in this list but with a name like that he sounds like he should be. The left back was shoved into the side as a teenager back in the 06-07 season and actually did okay picking up a Man of the Match award against Blackburn and then scoring in a 3-2 win at White Hart Lane. He was still sold at the end of the season to Leeds, with Big Sam ripping apart the defence like he would a big bag of crisps. Since 2012, the 31-year-old former Yeovil defender has been at Preston North End. 2006, Maddie Patterson. Oh, Maddie Patterson, you terrible player. Incredibly, this man, who honest to God I would probably give a run for his money, nearly went to a World Cup. What sort of fraudulence is this? He played 10 times for Newcastle and was effectively laughed off the pitch nearly every time before being chucked out to Norwich City in 2008. Within a year, he was at Mamelodi Sundowns. They sound like a type of butter spread, but anyway. The South African was back in the northeast of England a few years later, with Gateshead, then Bite Spartans, South Shields, and Wickham. Just turned 31 last week. 2007, Andy Carroll. The most expensive player in this list for sure. Andy Carroll really should have achieved more than he has. He is a better player than the 39 league goals he scored since leaving Newcastle suggests. Within a year of winning this award, Carroll was scoring for Newcastle in the Premier League 
A year after that, he was battering home 17 in the Championship. By January 2011, he was jetting off to Liverpool on a £35 million deal, and now he's 29 years old and no doubt best friends with the West Ham physio. 2008, Kazenga Lualua. It's a shame what's happened to Kazenga Lualua's career. The younger brother of cult hero Lamana, everyone wanted the winger to work out on Tyneside. Sure, he was called up for an FA Cup game less than a month after his 16th birthday. But no, he was chucked out to Brighton three times on loan before finally making a permanent 2011. Then he left for Sunderland in January 2018, played six times before getting spat out to Luton Town. The lad's not even 28 yet. 2009, Nile Ranger. Don't even talk to me about Nile Ranger. The lad goes around whining about being unemployable, yet he can't even be bothered to get up in the morning for training. You're a grown man, Nile, for Christ's sake. I'm not even going to bother listing where it all went wrong for this lad because we'd be here all night. But what sort of tulip gets his name tattooed across his face. 2010, Brad Inman. Brad Inman was a Scottish midfielder who never actually made it on the pitch for the first team, signing for Crew Alexandra in 2012. He's just after swapping Peterborough for Rochdale last summer at the age of 26. Oh, and he recently changed allegiances from Scotland to Australia. He is not good enough to play for either. 2011, Jack Anik. You know, it would be very easy for me to sit here and destroy Jack Anik and say that he has the reflexes of a 74 year old suffering with arthritis, but I won't. I feel sorry for the lad. He wasn't ready when he was shoved into the firing line back in the winter of 2014. He was just 21 and way out of his depth when he conceded 13 goals across 5 games, including a last minute winner to Sunderland. Lock up your daughters. The fact he initially came through with the Stadium of Light alongside his brother didn't help matters, but to be honest, I think most people were more concerned by the fact that his wrists were clearly made out of cream cheese. Anik was since chucked into the Newcastle basement, never to be seen again, before being flogged to Port Vale that summer. He's currently on loan from Rangers at Scunthorpe United. More or less his level. 2012, Remy Street. Remy Street is a 23 year old defender who signed for Port Vale in 2015 alongside Anik left him in May 2017 upon relegation, and so for the last 18 months or so, the man has presumably been twiddling his thumbs waiting for that phone to ring. Now it's the time to panic, I'd say. 2013, Sammy Omiobi. If Sammy scores were on the pitch, the poor lad was never the same after that. I didn't think it would be possible to find a worse version of Shaw Omiobi, but there is, and much, much worse. Sammy's first touch is boarding on criminal. He's quick, sure, but good lord, that man needs about five seconds to get the ball under control, tripping over it with all the regularity of Stevie Wonder in a petting zoo. After a few loans, he was finally sold to Bolton in 2017. 2014, Adam Armstrong. Adam Armstrong was the name on everyone's lips ever since becoming the second youngest player to represent the club in the Premier League and then firing home 20 goals in League One on loan at Coventry. But his spells in the Championship weren't so productive and the club have obviously grown tired of waiting, cutting the 21 year old loose to Blackburn Rovers in the summer. 2015, Rolando Ahrens. It seems as though Newcastle fans have been waiting forever for Rolando Ahrens to realise that potential he showed as an 18 year old when he first burst through under Alan Pardew with goals against Crystal Palace and Man City. But no, since then he's been picking up injuries, kicked out on nightclubs, and now is wound up on loan at Slovan Liberec out in the Czech Republic. Someone keep that lad away from the Prague night scene for the love of God. 2016, Michael Newbury. Northern Irish centre half, up and coming, just signed for Vikingur Olfazvik in the second tier of Icelandic football. I bet he's really good. 2017, Dan Berlazer. Watch this space. Dan Berlazer is a 21 year old midfielder, born in Gayset and spent his entire career in the Toon, and yet has bizarrely represented Turkey at underage levels. Yeah, I, I don't get it either. 2018, Freddie Woodman. Freddie Woodman is a world champion. Okay, an under 17 world champion, but still. England could win the world championships in tiddlywinks and they'd still splash that one on the front page of every newspaper. Woodman is an up and coming 21 year old goalkeeper waiting for his moment after recent loan spells up in Scotland. 